what challenges, what challenges do you typically see with the transition of wealth and businesses from parents to the next generation? Yes. This is something that you touched last year. And yes. how has that sort of... Evolved. Yeah. Exactly. And, and the key word or the buzzword is the millennials. Millennials, yeah. Millennials, as we say. And that's where we're seeing that there is a lot of change happening. And I think I'll put it into three buckets. And that's where all private banks need to look at in terms of how do we try to cater with this shift of mm -hmm. wealth going from one generation to the next generation. And number one is what I would call is digitizing. And digitally accessing our next generation is very critical for them because that is what they expect. The expectation is that at the touch point, they can see the entire portfolio. Mm -hmm. They can look at the research on their handset and they look at if they want to connect with their RMs and have a chat, they can have a chat rather than having a call to have a chat on secured sort of channels. So to me, that digitization is very critical. And, and that is where SCB has done a, a good step is what we're looking at is that our app, our SCB sort of private banking app has, has improvised a lot where you can have a lot of access to your portfolio, you can look at trends, you can look at research, mm -hmm. you can have an, a secured sort of chat and discuss idea flow. So that connectivity definitely happens from, from, from that perspective. We're definitely looking at the fintech and how do we bring fintech sort of into the equation? How do we digitize our account opening process? How do we digitize a lot of our procedures so that even if at a messaging and, 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 and that we can try to get approvals from our clients and connect with them and, and, and try to work forward. So to me, that's a big sort of shift that the private bank needs to sort of evolve and look mm -hmm. at, number one, two. Number two, in my view, is important is unbiased trusted advisor. And what I mean by that, and I think it relates a lot to Standard Charter is, as a bank, we don't have an asset management company. So what we say is that we want to bring the best asset manager for the asset class to the client. So if a client is, wants to invest in global equities, we will bring the best asset manager who has done very well, has a great historical past performance on global equities managing that, we'll bring that to the table to the client rather than saying that you have to use Standard Chartered asset manager for global equities because mm -hmm. that's what is part of the network. Yeah. So to me, that is going to be critical because what this new breed of investors are looking at is saying that give me an opportunity to evolve and, and check on what is in the market which makes sense mm -hmm. for the asset class and why are we choosing one over the other and why are we doing that. So that helps us in because we don't have our own asset management to become unbiased and showcase from an open architecture, what is the best asset manager that we want to bring to us? So I think that is going to be critical as well as, as, as I think part two of this equation where we want to look at in, in terms of the next generation and the flow from the first sort of patriarch to the second. Mm -hmm. The third, and I think the most important view as well is for me is the holistic approach. And I touched upon that last time as well, yeah. is that a lot of these clients, they look at a bank as a one-stop shop. They want to look at something where we want to look at their personal wealth management as well as their corporate entity and how do we manage that. So they want a one point of touch where they can look at a holistic approach rather than just looking at wealth management only because they have a wider. Yeah. So they want us to look at their trade finance. They want us to look at their property financing. They want us to look at, we're connecting them with people in various part of the world, especially China or suppliers in China or in Hong Kong and other businesses and to learn from them. So that is where I think it's going to become very critical in terms of trying to have this holistic approach and trying to connect them across the various touch points within the bank, but having a, a single point of touch from the client perspective. So he says, I don't want to go talk to 50 mm -hmm. people in the bank, but you are the sort of the window into the bank. You are the sort of generalist. In a way, one. the fundamental of the last two points that you mentioned is personalization, basically. Exactly. Towards the, Towards the client needs. Yeah. 